Under darkened skies sits a box on a circle of blood, surrounded by broken bones and caked in mud. If a comic is weird or bizarre, it falls into his domain. So join us, my fiends, in the short box of the inane. <laughs> something on the wing of the plane. Oh, nothing to worry about. It's just the star of this year's Short Box of the Inane. I'm your first happy host, the Last Angry Ghoulie. And that small furry creature you saw, well, it could be the alien life form. I bring you love. It's bringing love. Don't let it get away. No, no, no. This alien life form is very familiar. It has that long head that ravenous appetite, and it gets along famously with cats. Right, Jonesy? Jonesy? <laughs> oh, but why so formal? You can simply call the alien life form, ALF! Ha! No problem! I didn't think there would be. The star of his own self-titled sitcom from 1986 to 1990, ALF was the brainchild of creator and puppeteer Paul Fosco. Alf was a huge hit and followed the survivor of a doomed planet, Melmac, as he lived with his new adopted human family on Earth. He was so popular, two cartoon series, a video game, the single most depressing Christmas special I can recall, and yes, even a comic book followed. Alf's popularity waned at the start of the 90s, but over the last 25 years, whenever a show needed Alf, Fosco and his puppet were there, even starring in a few, perhaps, ill-conceived revivals. The Alf comic book lasted over 50 issues across four years as part of Marvel's Star Comics imprint. The line focused on providing titles for younger children to read, including Muppet Babies, Mad Balls, and Heathcliff. Basically, if you had even a minorly popular property, you got a Star Comic series. For the run of the ALF comic book, most of the work was done by writer Michael Gallagher, with art by Dave Manick and the late great Marie Severin. Throughout his series, he met some pretty famous guest stars. The High Evolutionary, who was the villain during Marvel's Evolutionary Wars event, he may or may not have joined the X-Men, but by far his most famous crossover was with a certain time traveler in a box. Excellent! No, not Bill and Ted. From ALF number 38, this is Timing is Everything. In the first story of issue 38, ALF is being chased by a bunch of sentient trees. As the last Melmachian, he's a collector's item and must avoid the bound tree hunters. The final story is a two-pager where they try and put the Tanner baby to sleep with a selection of his hairy tales. Just an excuse for more puns and bad jokes. But it's the middle story we're interested in. It starts with Boy Tanner, uh, I want to say Tim Tim, telling Alf that all their late night goofing off earned him a C- minus on his geography quiz. Alf bets he wish he could go back in time. And if he'd met the strange character Alf met back when he was part of the Melmac Orbit Guard, he could. We flash back to Alf's ship crashing, where he finds an old orbit guard call box in the woods. He heads in, but it's bigger on the inside. Faster than you can say Abbott and Costello, Alf asks, who's in charge? And a voice says, I am. It's Doctor Who's on first. He was expecting a pretty woman to be his new companion, but Alf will do. The ship is his TARDIS. <coughs> Tardy Gras. It can take a slime lord like the Doctor through time and space, but since the Karma Chameleon circuit is busted, it's stuck looking like a call box. And in case that isn't punny enough for you, the Tardigras is powered by the Eye of Harmony, Grits. His arch enemy is the Master Chef, and his home planet is... <laughs> enough! <laughs> Hi, reviewer. Look at the size of that host's head. Yes, Jamie. It is rather a big one, isn't it? It's the reviewer! That famous Time Lord who reviews Doctor Who episodes! Uh, retired. Retired? Uh, we've switched to reactions this year. <clears throat> no need for a fancy costume and accent now. Ouch. Oh, indeed, Mr. Goody. You should be wary of losing your job. Oh, uh, right, and uh, this fetching young thing must be your assistant. <laughs> oh, fur. It's not a skirt, it's a kilt. Uh, My name is Jamie. Hi, oh, reviewer, let's go. Oh, oh, wait, wait, stick around and help review this Doctor Who parody. Well, we'd like to help you, but we're needed to defeat the Kirathi invasion of Melmac. Uh, sudden death, you understand. So you'd rather face certain death in an alien invasion than hang out with me? Uh, something personal. It's just that we hate you. 
Alf decides to humor the Doctor, and they head off to the planet of the Drapes. Good folk who like to hang around, but they've sent out a distress call. Faster than you can say moth-eaten, the Doctor emerges with Alf wrapped up in his scarf. The Drapes are all torn up and ripped. The Doctor runs off to see who's behind him when he gets, uh, choked up at the thought of leaving Alf behind. They head to King Ringrod's palace. But the king warns them that the very fabric of their society is in danger. They then hear a familiar, Exterminate! Could it be? It is. The Barbie doll X. Armed with scissors to give unfortunate haircuts, they've chopped their way through the drapes. Of course, the Barbie doll X spread across the universe after their creator Stavros invented them. He was a Greek fellow, he owned a beauty parlor, thought hands just got in the way. But it could have been worse. They could have been invented by a plumber, then instead of a pair of scissors, they might have a plunger. <laughs> How dumb would that look? What for a chef? Then it could have been an egg whisk. The food is undercooked. Regurgitate! Regurgitate! Alf and the doctor grab the king and head out the door, but they find themselves on a cliff with a signpost. The post points out all the other noble drapes in the area, and Alf has an idea, but is stuck looking for something. And then after the tea party, we can do each other's nails! Oh, we now return to Alf number 38 here on the short box of the inane. Hey, after this, you want to get a bagel? Hey, what's the best type of bagel spread on Melmac? Alf smears the white out all over it. The top sign, which had previously read the Duke of Kent, has been altered as the Barbie Daleks roll out. They're shocked and delighted to see the top sign now reads, Ken! And head in the direction it's pointing, right over a cliff. Managing to strike a blow against female empowerment and suicide prevention at the same time, the lovesick Daleks go over the edge with puns weighing them down as they fall. Accepting the thanks of the king, Alf and the doctor are off. When they return to Melmac, the doctor offers Alf the full-time companion gig, only to find a curvaceous female waiting to be his new arm candy. Alf is quickly given the boot, and the story ends with Alf explaining that the doctor regurgitated several times since then. After all these puns, I know how he feels. John Boy, or whatever his name is, is as thrilled by all these puns as we are, but it doesn't change his bad test score. Alf tries to explain that time is relative, but when Bobo's battle axe mother shows up, Alf runs away. Which doesn't make any sense as he didn't do anything wrong, but then what about this story has made sense? I'm so damaged by this story, I can now only communicate in puns. <clears throat> well, that was a very comical book. But was this Doctor Who saved the day worth the trouble he caused? And given his elf diet, would any joke about eating po <clears throat> eating feline have been a capped astrophe? Let's take a closer look at Timing is Everything in Alf number 38. It's easy to see that the writer knew and appreciated Doctor Who at a time when the Doctor wasn't the worldwide phenomena she is today. He makes some obvious jokes about the original series. This Doctor is obviously based on Tom Baker's fourth Doctor. The companion is just eye candy for the viewer. The Daleks are easily done in by their lack of feet. The art is solid enough in a sort of comic strip style, although I do wonder about the coloring on the Doctor's, uh, muzzle? There's not much of a plot, however. This is simply Alf getting sucked into a generic point A to point B Doctor Who story as seen through the lens of a children's comic book. But the puns here are absolutely relentless. They beat you over the head with their word games. On the one hand, I have to admire the sheer volume they produce for a single Alf comic. On the other hand, enough already! I don't remember being this bothered by them when I was a kid. I would have been about 14 or 15 when this came out, and yes, I was reading children's comics. I was getting into superhero comics at this time because I think I was finally getting unsatisfied with the humor stories being told and wanted more mature stories. Overall, Alf is harmless enough for a children's comic, and I'm sure kids might even find the gags funny. But if you're a serious comic book reader or even a Doctor Who fan, then you'll want to treat Alf to Easter dinner and pass over this comic. There was no good Halloween gag I could think of. I give Alf number 38, Timing is Everything, two out of five stars. Speaking of gagging on Halloween, oh, there you go. <clears throat> on our next episode, we're, we're, we're going to have to get some pumpkin pie after I answer the door. Excuse me. See, pumpkin isn't even my cat. Mr. So Gooley. Is it true that Daleks are cloned from a single cell? Yes, I think I heard that somewhere. So would it surprise you to know that those cells give off a sort of soapy residue that enables telepathic communication? That's fascinating, it says in the script. And that they actually like to take this phone with them wherever they go.
I suppose it's like people taking that antibacterial gel with them wherever they go for their Then, hands. the way to defeat the Daleks is to fight them in the mountains. Oh, why is that? Well, everyone knows, mountains always block the signals from portable cell foam. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey! That. I answer the phones around here, it's my show. Another bad thing I have to endure is some awful joke at the door as I'm trying to end the episode. And now I'm getting phone calls? Excuse me, let me answer this. Hello? Knock, knock. What? What, did I stutter? Knock, knock. Okay. <clears throat> Who's there? Irma. Irma who? Irma going to beat you to death with your own spine for ripping off my show. I, I don't, that is, <laughs> There's one thing I can't stand. It's people who rip off someone else's hard work. Hey, wait. I just had a great idea. A show where I review Doctor Who. I'll call it I Know Who. Oh, I always knew he'd find me. That's why I had an unlisted phone number. Well, it was listed. It was just listed under huge internet stars, and I know no one would ever look for me there. Thank you for joining me, my friends. We'll see you back here next year for another dip into the short box of the inane. A loving homage. I mean, parody. We'll, we'll, we'll call it whatever we have to call it so I don't get sued by all the people I'm ripping off. Thank you very much. We'll see you next year. Don't worry about him. I'm going to buy him off. We'll be friends again. I'm going to send him a tanning bed so he can get some color. <laughs> <laughs>